Hello learners, welcome to Constant Learners. In the previous video, we discussed the concept of normalization. Now, before jumping to the normal forms, we need to understand what is functional dependency. So today in this video, we are going to discuss what is functional dependency. And if time permits, we will also look at the types of functional dependencies. All right. Before we begin, I request you to please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Let's get started. Now, the word dependency, that means we're talking about some kind of dependence. Now, we know that in this, we are talking about relational databases, right? And relational databases have relations, that is tables, correct? Tables have columns, that is attributes, right? So, we are talking about the dependency of attributes. That means dependency of one attribute or a set of attributes over another attribute or a set of attributes correct so we're talking about the dependency of attributes right now here we have a table right in this table we have two attributes x and y correct let's say attribute y is dependent on the attribute x all right now what do we mean by the statement that attribute y is dependent on attribute x this means that we can get the values of y using the values of x. Let's say if I tell you if x is equal to 3, what is the value of y? We can go to this third tuple T3. Here x is equal to 3. Right? And we can use this value to look for the value of y for this case. So for x is equal to 3, we can identify that y is equal to c, right? So we are using the values of this attribute x to find the values of the attribute y, right? Whenever we use an attribute to look for the values of another attribute, we say that there is functional dependency, right? If I tell you for x is equal to 1, what is the value of y? We can look for x is equal to 1. Here in tuple T1, we are getting x is equal to 1. For x is equal to 1, we can find that y is equal to a, right? So, you can simply tell me that, ma'am, y is equal to a for x is equal to 1, right? So, here the dependent attribute is y, right? y is the dependent attribute because we are looking for the values of y using the values of x. So, in this case, the dependent attribute is y, correct? We are not calculating or computing anything. See, from functional dependency, from this word, we may think like we might need to compute or calculate anything. We are not performing any mathematical calculations here. We are only looking for or searching for the values of an attribute from the table. All right, we are only looking for or searching for the values from the table. We are not calculating anything. All right. Now, in this case, if you are calculating the values of y, that means y is the dependent attribute, right? Y is dependent on which attribute? On x. So, if y is the dependent attribute, then what do we call x? X is responsible for determining the values of y, right? So, we call x as the determinant because it is determining the values of y. So, y is the dependent attribute and x is the determinant attribute. All right. So, it could be a single attribute or it could be a set of attributes on both sides. The dependent can also be a single attribute or a set of attribute and the determinant could also be a single attribute or a set of attribute. Now, this is the basic of functional dependency. We will discuss some more points in detail in just a bit. All right. Before that, how do we represent functional dependency? How do we show functional dependency? So, we use a simple arrow to represent functional dependency, right? This kind of arrow we are using to represent the functional dependency. Now, here also we have an attribute or a set of attributes. And here also we have an attribute or a set of attributes. And to look from this example... We have two attributes, x and y, right? Now, which attribute will come at this end of the arrow and which attribute will come at this end of the arrow? 
so we need to remember that we always go from the determinant towards the dependent right this is how we represent the functional dependency that is we go from the determinant attribute towards the dependent attribute so here we know that y is the dependent attribute and x is the determinant attribute so how are we going to show this functional dependency we will write it as x determines y or y is functionally dependent on x how do we read this this is the denotion that is this is how we denote functional dependency but how do we read this we read it as y is functionally dependent on x because here y is the dependent attribute right and x is the determinant so we can also read it as x determines y or we can read it as functional dependency of x on y all right so these are the three ways to read the functional dependency all right if let's say i have other attributes let's say i have m n and it's going towards p q r so we can say that the attributes m n these are two different attributes okay these are two attributes attributes m n determine the attributes p q r all right if let's say here i have student id name all right and on the right hand side we have department hod and marks these are all different attributes right so we can say that department hod marks are functionally dependent on attribute student id and name or we can read it as attribute student id and name determine the attributes department hod and marks all right so this is how we denote functional dependency and read the statement of functional dependency now let's discuss some scenarios to see where the functional dependency is existing and where it is not existing right now here we have a table wherein we have two attributes again m and n right m is the determinant and n is the dependent we have to check whether n is functionally dependent on m or not right so the first case is for same determinants right now in this case if i tell you that for m is equal to 1 get me the value of n right now in this entire column there's only one tuple that is t1 where m is equal to 1 so we can simply look at the column n and understand or identify that n is equal to bat correct but now if i tell you if m is equal to 5 what is the value of n now in this case there are two tuples t3 and t5 where m is equal to 5 here also m is equal to 5 here also m is 5 right now let's look at the values of n in this case in double t3 the value of n is fat and in double t5 the value of n is mat now which value am i going to consider whether i am going to consider n is equal to fat or n is equal to mat which is the correct value of n now this is the confusion right we are getting two different values of n that is fat and mat and we cannot decide which is the correct value of n now n is entirely dependent on the value of m but m is not giving us one single proper value of n and thus in this case the functional dependency is not existing right functional dependency does not exist again if i tell you for m is equal to 2 what is the value of n so here again we have two tuples that is t2 and t4 where m is equal to 2 the value of n here is cat and the value of n here is hat which is the correct value of n whether it is cat or hat see the determinant should give us only single value of the dependent we cannot get two different values for the same determinant right when the determinants are same then the values of dependents must also be the same only then the functional dependency will exist right so for same determinants the value of dependents must also be the same only then the functional dependency will exist so in this table the functional dependency of m on n does not exist all right because we are getting different values of dependents for same values of determinants now, now the next criteria is 
for same dependence. Here in this table, again, n is the dependent. Here we have two times we are getting hat and two times we are getting mat. Now let's see whether the functional dependency of m on n exists or not, right? If I tell you, tell me the value of n for m is equal to 1, right? We're going to look at this column here. There's one tuple only where m is equal to 1. Nowhere else we are getting m is equal to 1. There's only one tuple, right? So we'll simply go to the column n, look at the value n is equal to hat, right? We got our value for the dependent using the determinant. Then let me tell you for m is equal to um, 3. Sorry. For m is equal to 3, what is the value of n? There's only one tuple where m is equal to 3, right? And we got the value n is equal to fat. Correct? Then if I tell you, tell me the value of n for m is equal to 4. So again, there's only a single tuple T4 where m is equal to 4. The value of n for that is hat. Now, if we notice, we are getting hat for two places. For m is equal to 1 also, we are getting n is equal to hat. And for m is equal to 4 also, we are getting n is equal to hat. But it's okay. It does not matter. Unless we are getting two different values for n, it does not matter what the value of dependent is. We should get only one value of the dependent for a single value of the determinant. That is our scenario right so even if there are repetitive values in the dependent it does not matter right we only need to find the value of the dependent using the determinant that is what functional dependency is now if i tell you for m is equal to 2 what is the value of n now if we look closely there are two tuples t2 and t5 where m is equal to 2 now let's look at the values of n for both these cases here the value of n is mat and here also the value of n is mat, right? So what do we understand from this? That probably we have by mistake stored this data two times, right? Because for the same value of m, m is equal to 2, we are getting the same value of n also. We are getting a single value. For m is equal to 2, here also we are getting mat and here also we are getting mat. We are not getting two different values. Unless we are getting two different values, there is not a problem. Our purpose is to find the value of n using the value of n. And we are getting a single value of n using a single value of m. Whether it is stored in two different tuples, in one single tuple, it does not matter. We should get just one single value. That is our purpose. So in this case, even if we have same dependence, it does not matter. We should get a single value of the dependent. And if you are getting a single value of the dependent, the functional dependency is existing. Right? Next criteria is the determinant is unique. Now, in this case, we have all unique values of the determinant. Now, if I tell you, tell me the value of n where m is equal to 2. So, there is only one tuple where m is equal to 2. We get the value cat, right? If I tell you, tell me the value of n for m is equal to 5. So, there is only one tuple where m is equal to 5 and the value of n there is mat, right? So, whenever the determinant will be unique, the functional dependency will definitely exist, right? So, Again, here n is functionally dependent on m, right? So there are two things that we need to focus on. First, if the determinant is unique, the functional dependency will exist. If let's say the determinant is repeating, there is repetitive determinant, then also the value of dependent should be the same, right? If there are two tuples, let's say here also we have two and here also we have two, then the value for n in both of these tuples should also be the same. If that is the same, then functional dependency will definitely exist, right? Let's take a very simple example here and then we will end this video, right? So we have to check two things, whether functional dependency is existing or not. First, the determinant is unique or not. And if the determinant is not unique, then for same determinants, the dependence should also be the same, right? Here we have passport number, name, age, and the company where these people are working in. So Passport number of Meg is 1, she's 30 years old and she works in company B. Passport number of Greg is 2, he is 46 and he works for company E. Alright, now first let's discuss whether passport number is determining name or not. Right, let's check the first criteria whether determinant is unique or not. So of course the determinant here is passport number. The passport number is unique in this entire column. So if the passport number is unique, then functional dependency will exist. For passport number 3, 
the person is Jack. For passport number five, the person is Jack. So even though the names are repeating twice, it does not matter whether the dependents are repeating or not, it does not matter. The determinants should not repeat. And if the determinants are repeating, then the dependents should also be the same. We are getting the single value for passport number is equal to three. We are getting the single value name is Jack. For passport number equal to six, we are getting the single value that is Pam. So here functional dependency is existing. Let's check the vice versa of the same. That is whether name will determine the passport number or not. Right. So now tell me the passport number of the person whose name is Meg. So here this is the person whose name is Meg and this is also a person whose name is Meg. Right. But the passport number of this Meg is one and the passport number of this Meg is four. Right. Now the dependent here is passport number. We cannot get two different values of the dependent. Which one is right? Where the passport number is one or passport number is four. We cannot identify the correct value here. Right. Similarly for Jack, this Jack's passport number is three and this Jack's passport number is five. So which one is correct? What is the value of the dependent? Here the dependent is passport number. But whether we are going to take three as the answer or we are going to take five as the answer, we don't know. So in this case, the functional dependency does not exist. Now let's take two attributes as the determinants, name and age. And the dependent is company, right? So we have to check whether company attribute is functionally dependent on name and age or not, right? Now, in this case, first, let's check this person here. Meg is 30, right? And the company that she's working in is B. But there's another Meg who is also 30. And the company that she's working in is D, right? Now, the determinant, that is combination of these two attributes, name and age, this is repeating here. Meg is also 30 and this Meg is also 30. But the dependent values are different for both here. Here we are getting B and here we are getting D. Right? So functional dependency cannot exist. We cannot get two different values of the dependent. Right? Again here, Jack is 50 and this Jack is also 50. But this Jack 50 is working in company A and this Jack 50 is working in company C. So now again, we are getting two different values for the dependent, which is not possible. So the functional dependency in this case does not exist. Now next, let's take the combination of passport number and company, right? To determine the attributes name and age. So we have to check whether the attributes name and age are functionally dependent on this attributes or not. That's combination of passport number and company, right? Now here the passport number is one and company is B, right? Passport number is 2, company E, 3, A, 4, D, 5, C, 6, F. Right now, we are only seeing the determinants. Now, the first criteria here is getting satisfied. That is, determinant is unique. And when the determinant is unique, the functional dependency will automatically exist. Right? Because here, for passport number 1B, there's the person, the dependent that we're getting is Meg, who is 30. Right? For passport number 3A, the person we are getting is Jack 50. And we've already discussed that whether we are getting the same value of dependent or not, it does not matter. Right? Like for passport 1D, we are getting Meg 30. For passport 4D also, we are getting Meg 30. Right? As the dependent. So it does not matter whether the dependent is same or not. For different values of the determinant, when the determinant is unique, the dependents may be same. Or may not be same and in that case the functional dependency will definitely exist now you have to tell me whether this attribute name is functionally dependent on passport number and age or not right check the functional dependency and write it in the comment section whether name is functionally dependent on passport number and age or not and another one check whether the combination of name and company can determine passport number or not, whether the passport number is functionally dependent on name and company attributes or not. All right. I hope that this concept of functional dependency was clear. If you have any doubts, please ask them in the comment section. I'll make sure to respond to them and clarify all of your doubts. And if you understood this and if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and thank you so much for watching.